<laughs> hey, I'm John Volger with Premier Guitar. I'm here with Stephen Wilson in Nashville, right for a sound check. Thanks for working us in. Thank you. So, uh, you've had, I know you mainly as a PRS man. I've seen you right. um, mostly with those. Um, but right now, it seems like you're kind of uh, more in single coil land. Yeah, I, f I fell in love with the sound we were just listening to there. Now, it's interesting because this is just a little practice sound. And this is the sound I made the last album on. Yeah, it's it's so yeah. different from your earlier work. I, I really enjoyed it. Really, you know, it's it's a cool chapter. Well, I guess I'm I'm the sort of person that's always looking to to change. You know, one of the things you can do, you can't change your own personality, but one of the things you can do is you can change the tools, you can change the people you work with. Yeah. So I'm always looking for kind of new sounds, and for whatever reason, this time around, I just totally fell in love with the sound. The Telecaster going to this little H and K uh, tube practice amp. Right. And the, what I was playing to you there, that actually was the first thing I wrote for the record, which is this song called "People Who Eat Darkness." And I literally just plugged in not this telly. I bought this telly later on, but I, bought, I plugged in this pretty cheap Mexican telly I had. It was good, but it wasn't that expensive. It had been sitting in the corner of the room for years, literally unloved. Yeah. All my other guitars were out on the road one day and I, I, f I felt like I wanted to write something. So I plugged in this telly into this little amp and I just started. And it's the most, one of the most cliched things you can play on a guitar, you know, <laughs> but it just sounds so cool. Right. And of course, the thing about the telly is that it's just got that very naturally aggressive kind of rock and roll sound to it. Isn't that amazing? And yeah. it's like 60 year old technology and they yeah. just got it so right. They really did. The first time without even really knowing what they were doing. You know, right, <laughs> yeah, so, which of course, I, I'm ignorant of most of this stuff. I, I'm, I'm not a scholar of guitars at all, but you know, I know I, I, know I like something when I hear it. You yeah. know? So I just love this sound, and it pretty much became the signature sound of the To The Bone record, to the point that when I came to tour it, I had to figure out a way, okay, I have to now bring Telecasters into my rig, I have to get this sound, right. uh, you know, or something equivalent, but using in the context of my rig where I can still go back and use my old sounds too. Right. And for you the still, material. just for you watching, we're not, we're, well, I don't want to give away too much, but he has a massive rig here too. But this is part of it integrated into it. Yeah, I mean, I have I have a lot of pedals, but then there's a part of the show where I literally come. We do this thing where I come on at the end of the show, first encore. I carry the little practice amp on with me. I carry the telly around my neck, and I just plug it in, yeah. and I play a song with nothing. Oh, that's great. Just the guitar, the little practice amp, and I sing. Like, so, uh, yeah, like a kid like in a busker, high school. You know, like Billy yeah, Bragg or something. Right. Yeah, busker. So it's really, uh, it's really both extremes. You know, lots of very impressionistic sounds where I'm using a lot of processing and the most simple, you know, rock and roll, you know, guitar into an amp kind of approach possible. Yeah. Right, where it all started. Well, talking of tellies, let's hear about this thing. What a cool guitar. So this... Yeah, so the, I mentioned earlier about this, I had this Mexican telly which I'd bought. I think I bought it during this period about 10 years ago where I thought, okay, I'm supposed to be a guitar player. I should have a telly. Yeah. I should have a Strat. I should have, you know, I should have at least, at least classic guitar, I should right. have one of each. So I went out and bought this Mexican telly. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. It's probably not the best telly in the world, but I bought it, so at least I had one. If I, you know, particular overdub I want to do on a telly, at least I've got one. And literally, it sat in the corner I didn't touch it for about 10 years, literally. Yeah. It sat there untouched. And it was only really because I had this situation where all my other guitars were out on tour that I had to use this guitar. So it was um, serendipity, as they say. Right. And it started my love affair with the telly. Now, when I got to the point where I knew I was gonna make the record and I was gonna be using the telly a lot, and I knew I was going to be touring with the telly. I thought, okay, I should go out. And, I should go out and re get a really, really good one now. Right. And I went down to the Fender, the Fender uh, showroom in, in London. In London. And I just tried a lot of their guitars out. And you know, it's like with a guitar, it's 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 whichever one you bond with, right? Right. I know nothing about guitars. I can't talk about pickups or neck, you know, different types of wood. It means nothing to me. Firstly, I just thought this was the coolest looking guitar I'd ever seen. It is seen. a very cool looking guitar. <laughs> yeah. And they said to me, well, it's a, a custom 1960, it's, from a, it's a 1963 from the custom shop, uh, which meant very little to me, except I like the idea that it's from the 60s. Yeah. Um, except it's not, of course, it's a, it's a replica of a, of a, of a 63. So, um, and I played it and it just sounded great and I loved it and I fell in love with it and, and I just 
think it's the coolest looking guitar I've ever owned. It looks like a 60s telly that was originally a sunburst and somebody painted black exactly. over it yeah. with like spray paint. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly <laughs> I I love that. And that's exactly the effect they've obviously tried to create. Yeah. Uh, it's so, got a real Joe Strummer kind of yeah. uh, vibe to it. Well, and my, funny you should mention that. My, my, my Mexican telly is the Joe Strummer. Oh, really? Right? That's perfect. Which That's has perfect. got all the Joe Str So it looks like a copy of his original or beat up guitar, you know? Yeah. I like that. I don't think, I don't like things to look too pristine you sure know. yeah sure but after a little bit of touring they're going to look like that anyway well that's it and i'd be I, you know i'm terrible with guitars i treat them you know like dirt so yeah. I, i'm every guitar player's probably worst nightmare in the way i treat my guitars so so it's going to end up looking pretty shabby anyway but i like that you know it's yeah cool. yeah it'll be kindling in a yeah. few yeah <laughs> probably a yeah. few tours well, that's great okay so that is presently kind of your number one on this tour would you say Whenever I play material from To The Bone, right. uh, I'm pretty much using the Telecaster because that's what I used sure. in the studio, yeah. Well, very cool. Well, let's uh, talk about some of the other ones you're playing. Okay, so my, my faithful uh, Paul Reed Smith, so you'll see how beat up this one is. <laughs> right. Because I played this a lot over the years. Actually, it's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. But a few battle scars yeah. there, a few battle scars. Noble wounds, yeah, yeah that's great. So Paul Reed Smith guitars, I started playing these um, around about 2000 and two, uh, 2001 I started playing them and I was very much, at the time I was very much into metal sounds. Mm -hmm. Not, I wasn't making metal music but I loved the, I loved the kind of musical vocabulary of metal music and I wanted to get a lot more of that kind of heavy rich yeah. stuff in there. And I worked with a friend of mine's band, a Swedish band called Opeth uh, and the guitar player in that band, Michael, was playing Paul Reed Smith's. And I loved the sounds he was getting out of his PRS guitar. So again, I went down to the Paul Reed Smith showroom at the time, uh, or the distributor in, in England, and I tried a few uh, Paul Reed Smith guitars out. And this is not the one I originally got. I got this one a couple of years later when uh, PRS very kindly decided they wanted to endorse me. And this, I think, is the best sounding I have. It's, you know, like, like every guitar manufacturer, they all sound different. This one has just been the one I seem to have bonded with the most. Is it a Tremonti, do you know, the model? Already, so you've lost me now. <laughs> Tonto, is it a Tremonti? It's gold. It's gold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, it's oh. the gold one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're speaking to real idiots, <laughs> and a real idiot here. I don't know. All this stuff, I really don't know. Honestly, all I care about is does it sound good. Yeah. You're talking about the pickups, right? Well, the... Um, I. Th uh, I thought DiMarzio it might. Pickups, oh, they're, oh, they're Demarcius. Okay. Apparently. Okay. Yeah. Um, I th I think it might be a Tremonti model, his signature model, but it's because it's kind of less poly shaped and a whammy okay. bar. Okay. But but I'm not sure. You know a lot more than I yeah, do already. Well, it's my job. <laughs> I've owned this guitar for a long time, and you already know yeah. more about it than I do. Yeah. So do you know what kind of Demarcius you put in it? <laughs> okay, black and white ones, yeah. I recognize those. Well, yeah. Anyway, it sounds great. I've heard that guitar on... Uh, You're beginning uh, to get a feel for where you shouldn't go now, aren't you? Yeah. Right, don't... The sort of questions you shouldn't ask, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, so that's sort of became your... Um, it's not your initial PRS, but eventually became the... The initial one, one actually I use for drop D. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of the reason I originally bought it, because I was doing a lot of stuff with drop tuning. They do that well. They do that really well. Yeah. So, so I bought one initially to, to, for use to, for drop D, and that's the one I still use for drop D in oh. the show. Okay, so uh, let's hear this through the bad cap, through the big sure, rig. Yeah. So this is a sort of metal sound. <laughs> So that, that was kind of what I wanted the PRS to do, those right. big, big metal riffs. Yeah, know, that yeah. is huge. It's yeah. actually shaking my body. And, and that's uh, through the, and that's through, now it's now through the bad cat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fabulous. Okay, so between the telly, this, and then what's your third guitar you're So uh, the third guitar is, is another PRS, but just in drop D. So uh, we can whip that out if you like, Ton. So this. So this is your, your first. This is the one I originally one. Uh, bought the first PRS I ever owned. I actually went to the to the showroom in, in England and chose this one. Yeah. And this one we use for, for drop D stuff. So similar you know, similar <laughs> That's that's really the only difference that yeah. it, it's it's in drop D, yeah. That's great. Well, long as you have that on, and we've talked about it a little bit, um, yeah. let's talk about this amp you're running into. 
Okay. So this is uh, this is a Badcat 50 watt Lynx head, um, and I've been using Badcat amps exclusively now, probably for about 15 years. And again, it was a very similar. It was around the same time I wanted something that would give me the big crunchy metal riffs, but also have the flexibility to do all the other stuff I do too. Sure. And uh, I've been using them for a long time now. Yeah. And you're running it into this, uh, this attenuator, So, right? yeah, so this is called an Unleash, and all this really, this allows me from my pedal board to switch to a higher amplitude. So this is between the head and the speaker. Okay. So this is not driving the head any, for, for, uh, any hotter, because I don't want to do that. But sometimes I just want a little bit of extra volume yeah. for a solo or something. Sure. So I can program a patch in which basically switches to the other channel on the Unleash, which you can see. It just basically gives you two channels, different, uh, two, two different sort of volume settings that oh, you okay. can choose between, yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Okay, well actually that kind of segues right into your pedal board. Let's, ref uh, let's talk okay. about that. Okay, now we're at the motherboard, uh, <laughs> the mother of all boards. Take us through this thing. It's really clean, man. I mean, there's a ton of stuff there, but it's really clean. This pedal board was designed for me by the guy who makes the switching system, Gig Rig, oh, yeah. Daniel, uh, who, who also has that uh, YouTube show, the Pedal Show, is that what it's called or something? Anyway, so Daniel is like my guru because he knows I know nothing about guitars and I just say to him, Daniel, design me this. So he knows what kind of thing I'm looking for. Yeah. He designed me the system. So basically the, the way it works is that I have um, one bank on the G2, the gig rig switching system, is just what I call generic sounds. Sure. So I have a generic clean sound, I have a generic tremolo sound, a generic heavy sound, etc., etc. Pretty much each one of those is just engaging one of these pedals. Mm -hmm. So each of these switches here is one loop on okay. the gig rig. So this particular sound here, which I just call the clean sound, the only pedal engaged in that loop is the Sorso Audio EQ pedal. Oh, okay. Okay, so generally with clean sounds, I like them to be a little bit brighter than the Bad Cat naturally will make them. So I usually have a setting just to brighten up the clean yeah. sound. But this is, the, this is essentially the sound going straight through into the amp, just the tiny little bit of EQ, just to brighten up a bit. So it's a nice sound. Yeah. So then, uh, going through the patches then, so then I'll have one which has just got a vibrato pedal added and a little bit of delay added to it. Okay. The vibrato pedal is this one here, the, dime, uh, sorry, the diamond vibrato pedal. Okay. I love this pedal, absolutely love it. It kind of, it just gives a little bit more colour to a clean sound without necessarily sounding like you've added anything to it, if that makes sense. <laughs> So again, it's just a little touch of delay and a little bit of vibrato and suddenly that sound is much richer, more colorful. Yeah, it's a very subtle, so it's actually, so it's that diamond back there, but it's yeah. not this, right? No, this is, just, this is just my readout for what the patches are called. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. So this is just a display here that's given me the, the, the name of this patch is vibrato, which is my generic and are these BPMs, the 120? Uh, that would be if I had, if I was using that facility. I'm not using that facility. Oh, but wow, that's cool. All I'm using this for literally is as a display to tell me what the patch oh, is. Okay. okay, cool. So that's my gen generic vibrato patch. So then I've got what I call my generic Pete Townsend patch. Now, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that's nice about the, the gig rig is you have pre and post gain. Yeah. So you can drive the signal either end of the signal chain. So on this sound, it's essentially still a clean sound, but I've just given it a little bit more drive to the amp using the post gain to get the bad cat to just break up a little bit earlier. I've got a touch of compression from uh, oh, the, the Cali 76. Right, the mini one. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I'm a big fan of using 1176s mm -hmm. in the studio, so it, it made sense for me to have this as a pedal. And I've just got a little touch of, of room reverb on it as well. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds particularly good with a telecast. Yeah, so just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very Townsend. You yeah. Know? So, uh, so that's that's another sort of generic sound that I call Townsend. Generic tremolo sound. Yeah, that's great. Just tremolo and and a little bit of delay on that, and, and, and the compressors in as well. And what tremolo are you using? For that? So that's the Moog. 
That's the Moog oh, tremolo. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Those are great. Mm. We did a review of those. They're great. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, then my generic Leslie patch. So I'm using the Option 5 Leslie pedal. I've, I love Leslie effects and I've experimented with a lot of different Leslie uh, sort of simulators. Uh, there are some great ones. I think I keep coming back to this one as my favourite, the Option 5. So that's on slow, Leslie. That's cool. I love the way it ramps up. It's not like immediately fast. You right. Kind of. And you can set the time. Like, uh, uh, and you can uh, set the. Uh, and also, it has that thing I love about real Leslie cabinets. It gives you a little bit of break up and distortion as well. A little yeah. bit of drive. Yeah. Well, option five. I've not seen it before. That's that Very sounds great. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so the next of my generic sounds would be what I call ambient leads. Okay. So this is just uh, now this the bad cat. We should just mention the bad cat has two channels clean and dirty um, so I'm also using the gig rig I'm switching between the two depending on what what the patch is yeah okay so this one the ones we've heard so far have been going through the clean channel for the first time we're going to hear one going through the dirty channel and I've just added some delay to it so I can get a kind of a one thing I should mention here I'm a massive fan of putting delays before the drive stage, if you know what I mean. Really? Yeah. I don't like, because if you listen, I grew up listening to Neil Young records, right? Sure. And one of the things about Neil Young is he has all this reverb and all this delay before his gain stage. Yeah. So you get that kind of effect of the guitar almost trying to break through, well, the effect trying to break through. And, but they can really get away from you like that. I but love may, it. That's part of the I beauty. Love it. The I love it. When it. I love it when it's kind of off the hook. Yeah. yeah. So this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So this, for example. That's rock and roll to me. Right, that's huge. That's rock and roll, yeah. yeah. Now I do have the option also to um, to do it the other way, but I have to then go through the clean channel. Uh, yeah, clean channel using a, a Prince of a Prince Prince of Tone pedal, and then of course I can get the clean delay if I want sure. to. So I do have the option. <laughs> So Way more tame and control. So more traditional yeah. use of delay on a lead guitar sound. But personally, I hardly ever use that sound. I just love the that sort of off the hook, yeah. out of controlness of having the delay driving driving the the distortion as well. Yeah, um, that's great. So that's another of my generic sounds. What I call lead pedal as opposed to lead amp. So lead amp. This is this is just literally using the bad cat uh, gain. <laughs> And again, that's the delay going into the into the uh, the dirtiest uh, channel as well. So, um, what else have I got here? Just a generic crunch sound. So this is using the amp tweaker pedal. Do you know this one? Uh, yes. Yeah. So just. Uh, This is actually going through the chat, the the bad cat. So again, I have a choice of gain using the clean channel and a pedal, or gain directly into the the dirty channel of the amp. Yeah, it's great to have all those different options at your feet. Yeah, that's too cool. Very very different in character, obviously. One yeah. has got one you've got more control over in terms of amplitude and sound and all that stuff. But there's something about going through the dirty channel that to me is always more rock and roll, always more organic, yeah. more real. I don't find I use the pedal processing so much uh, in those contexts. Right, and then the sound you already heard, just my basic metal sound, which is literally just guitar, nothing at all from the pedals into the amp. <laughs> So that's, that's just the sound of the bad cat. Because it's huge. And then 
This is one of my favourites. Same sound, but with a electroharmonics pog with a lower octave. I use that a lot too, yeah. God. I use that a lot too. That's huge. It's like you think the stage is going to collapse when you hear that. It's, yeah. It's yeah. So, Melted and a few you're running two pogs. I am. I've got one um, one for a lower octave and one for a higher octave. Oh, okay. So it's... Uh, Controlled it, independently through that. Yes. Yeah, so the, well, they're two completely different pedals, so they're two different loops on here. Yeah. So I can add a lower octave or a higher octave or both if I want to, yeah. That's great. So do you program any per song or keep them a generic um okay well that's what's going to come on to so this is this is my generic bank here yeah which i would say i use for about half of the songs in the show the other half of the songs where there are more complex songs which require a lot of different patches with very very specific delays or reverbs for example which we're going to come on to in a minute then i will actually create a whole bank for a specific song or oh, half yeah. a bank that makes sense yeah but this is the generic bank i would say this is kind of a one size one size fits all for about half the show mm -hmm. half the songs in the show so my last couple of generic patches are again a metal but with some delay added uh, where are we <laughs> and then the final one is what i call the shoegazer sound which is like a wall of sound. Yeah. Again, <laughs> all that delay is going into the into the dry in the driven channel. You know, I love it. It's a mess. I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah, that is big. Yeah. So that's my generic. Um, so uh, just one thing to mention is the 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 reverb and the delay I'm using. They're both Strymon. Strymon Big Sky for the reverb, Strymon Timeline for the delays, and that's midied up to the, the gig rig here. So every setting, delay and reverb wise, is unique to every patch I go to. Whereas, of course, it's, that's not true of any of the other pedals. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, that's not true. The EQ is also MIDI. The EQ can be unique to each patch, and these two can be unique to each, each patch. All the, other rest of the all the rest of the pedals stay in their specific state throughout the whole show. Yeah, the more like analog. Yeah, yeah. The only one I haven't shown you is the, is the phaser, which I'm using the, small, the Electro Harmonics Small Stone phaser, which is. Yeah, just that classic phase. That's it's great. a classic phaser. And it's funny because I, I had to search for this one because it was a specific sound I love from the 70s. Right. And it's one of those it's one of those pedals where you it's not only about getting the right model, it's about getting the right year of the right model. Right. And I said to I played Daniel um, particular I forget what it was I played him, a particular song where I was hearing this phaser and effect, his effect and he said, Ah, oh, you need this this particular pedal, but you need the ones they made in nineteen seventy four. Which is really? it seems crazy to me. Well, I guess it makes sense though because back then you could maybe some components were only available exactly. during certain times. Yeah, well, that's what he says. He said he says they changed the components after that. Yeah. The particular sound you want is the 1974 pedal. So he managed to track one down for me. It's a it's a glorious. Oh, that's great. Glorious. Yeah. Phaser. Effect. How cool, man. So then, so then other songs in the show will have their own specific bank. So I can go through the banks in the gig reusing using this little extra switch here so I go to bank two and then I get the bank relating to a song called home invasion and then all my patches are across the top for home invasion wow yeah. he was really convenient that the guy that built gig rig built your board that yeah. was really <laughs> oh yeah absolutely he really knew that rig he's my guru he's he's amazing yeah, yeah. I mean he he, he basically I say to him Daniel what's the best tremolo pedal and he'll say well because he knows my music too so he'll say well for your kind of music and for your needs this is the one the best vibrato pedal this is the one huh. because I you know I I like writing music I don't like spending forever researching oh, yeah, every yeah. pedal under the sun you know oh you can get bogged down in that yeah and that's great and you can switch between your amps there as well it's yeah all really so convenient. i'm switching between the bad cat and the little h and k the for the for the uh, the encore song i do huh and just running a quarter inch into this boss uh boss volume, volume. pedal okay wah, -wah pedal but, uh, those run before everything else yeah i think so the the wah -wah, Tom, the wah, wah pedal is before First in the chain, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. 
God, that's great. Do you know what powers all this? Uh, what what power he's using for? Um, it's the the generator. generator. All these little gig rig distribution oh, okay. boxes. Yeah, all the cables are made by Klotz. I know that. Oh, great! I yeah. love Klotz cables. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's great! What a fun little science experiment this thing is, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's basically a guitar setup for someone who's not interested in messing about. Right. It's very clean. It gives me exactly what I want. Uh, it gives me all the options I need. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah a lot of colors on the palette. Man. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's yeah. great. And I do, you know, the thing about my music is I do use a lot of different sounds. Very often within the context of a single song, mm -hmm. there are basic heavy sounds, there are clean sounds, there are more sound designy elements, things you wouldn't even necessarily recognize as being a guitar. And this is the, the rig that gives me all of those possibilities. And also the option of just a telly through a practice amp. Exactly. So which you, is great. Exactly. So really right. from the most simple setup of all to something that's got literally all the buttons pressed and is more impressionistic and yeah. more sound designer, yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, Stephen, thanks so much for uh, taking the time. I know you guys have sound check and you're on pleasure. this tour, but man, thank you so much. This My pleasure. Been a, been a treat to uh, go through it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks very Cheers. much. Cheers. Till next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new Rig Rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash Rig Rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new Rig Rundown is available. Cheers, see you soon.